This movie's gonna flop Our mind's about to pop But enough of that noise Time for the B-roll, boys! Welcome to another electrifying episode of B-Roll Boys. <laughs> With me is my battery-operated host, Justin. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and my uh, uh, super-conducting host, Harlan. What's up? That was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. I feel good about that. <laughs> and today, we bring you 1989's Shocker, directed by Wes Craven, who uh, seems like, despite all of his efforts, has actually made a couple good movies, but <laughs> this, this, this may not be one of them. <laughs> um, so... I don't know if this is good or not. I liked it, but I don't know if that makes it good. Yeah. Well, is anything we like, does it really make it good? Well, yeah. Yes. Okay, that's <laughs> we, we are the single authority on We are on the movies. arbiters on the state of goodness. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we match B-roll to A-roll. It's just what we do. We sort it out. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> anyway, so shocker, yeah. Um, it's it's weird that uh, he came off of Nightmare on Elm Street into this and then made Scream. Yeah, I don't think it's a huge stretch to go from Nightmare on Elm Street to this. Why? What makes you say that? Because a lot of the stuff is happening like in the main character's sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's just kind right. of like it's this telepathy through dreams kind of thing, and you're not really sure when he's asleep and when he's awake. That's very Nightmare on Elm Street esque. Yeah. Kind of, it, it does seem like this movie is like a culmination of all the ideas he wished he could have done. Because I remember hearing that Nightmare on Elm Street, he actually wanted to have a scene of like Freddy doing some kind of shaman ritual or something. <laughs> and that's how he became like, like a dream god, but they cut all that shit out. But look what happened here. So they let uh, our main... This movie got the scraps <laughs> of Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, we got a dude with... Uh... Uh, Do you think Horace Pinker is in my ceiling? <laughs> oh, the light started blinking, and it's an electrical light as opposed to a, a lantern. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Wes all, has a lot of gas lanterns in his kitchen. I'm a lot of gas lights over here. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, we're, we're here to talk about Shocker, and right. uh, this movie starts off exactly how you want, with a felon creating like tools in his basement, listening mm -hmm. to hair metal. Yeah, <laughs> relatable. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we join our, our, our protagonist, Jonathan, who seems like... Jonathan a, a, a Parker. Nice, yeah, Jonathan Parker. I even, I already forgot his last name. Um, so, it's, it's kind of an innocuous opening. So, it just starts off with this kid in high school. Well, I say kid. He looks like he's 33. Well, he's not, he's not in high school, though. He's in college. Was that college oh, the yeah. whole time? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, because the news that kept doxing him kept saying, like, oh, yeah, he's a he's a football player at whatever state university. All right. You know so that, that, may, that would put him at about, like, 20, 21 years old. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, yeah, I thought they were all supposed to be, like, 17-ish, you know, give or take. Yeah, like, that's, well, that's why he's living by himself with a girl over. Hmm. Well, see, I wasn't... It's just weird. The things that this movie doesn't make clear like that, I just thought that he was, like, in a room in his foster parents house. Yeah, you know I what I mean? I, yeah, I wasn't clear on that. Because I, I just kind of kept forgetting that it was like a foster parent situation because like he did, like, you know, it seems like they have like a pretty tight father-son relationship and he like, he like, you know, his father refers to himself as his father many times, but he just always calls him Don or Donnie. He never calls him dad. No. You know? Or daddy. <laughs> Which is almost like an unresolved issue in the movie and they just never addressed it. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, so basically, we, we enter Horace Pinker, which must be the best serial killer in the world. Horace Pinker. What a fucking name. That is it, a serial killer name. Like, I, 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 I just couldn't stop saying it like that. Horace Pinker. Also, this dude looks like Joe Rogan. He does. <laughs> but just imagine, like, getting murdered by that. Like, you're like, you're like, oh god, this is the it. I'll die at the hand of Horace Pinker. <laughs> <laughs> or if you, your family has to tell everybody that you died to the hands of Horace Pinker. It's like, oh, They're like, God, oh how'd he, how'd he die? They're like, oh, uh, ho uh, Horace Pinker uh, killed him? And then they well, start laughing. Yeah. Well, what's funny is that, like, this killer, he's supposed to be, like, this family killer. And the cops are like, oh, we can't find this guy. But he's not doing anything, like, interesting. He just comes in and, like, stabs people really loudly and then, and then leaves. leaves. Yeah. He's well, not, like, dusting prints. He's not, like, wearing gloves or anything. He just comes in, kills the person, makes a mess, and leaves. Yeah. And he just has been getting away with that a lot. Yeah. Well, maybe that's a good MO. You know, he gets in and gets out. 
Most people get caught because they stick around too Well, long. he was sticking around. Remember how long it took for him to kill that girl? When Jonathan right. was there in the dream, and then he came back with his dad. That's probably like a 35 minute <laughs> period. No, yeah. And he's still just like fucking around trying to kill this one unarmed woman with a knife. Yeah, because I think his dreams are like... So he can... he can he's like astral projecting. Yeah, he just has a psychic connection to, to Horace Pinker for whatever reason. So he just like sees the murders in his dreams. Well, because it's and his it, dad. And it seems like... Oh, spoiler? Yeah, twi that's oh. a twist. Oh, shit. And it, it seems like the dreams, like he's, he's witnessing something happening in real time. So at one point, yeah, like he like sees this woman being murdered... And then, and then he like he wakes up and he tells his friend he's like, all right, they're at this street, uh, blah blah blah. And so they go and get there, and the murder is still in progress. I'm like, what was he doing for like I don't know? Let's say like it took like 20 minutes to get there or something. Yeah, like, that's true. How does it take that long to stab somebody? It's like you don't want to play with your food for that long. <laughs> <laughs> I I would like to think though, um, even in 1989, like this guy would have gotten caught. Like immediately. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> it's, it's you get caught like the second people. time you do this. It's, it's not like he's doing it in like a remote place, like in a cabin in the woods where like no one's gonna hear. Like he's doing this in like an apartment complex where like there are probably plenty of people around to hear this woman screaming. Like, I'm just like, keep it down. I got work in the morning. <laughs> and I guess it's all in like the same city too. Oh, and and also, uh, like, he, so they show up uh, to stop that murder. And like you know, all the cops are there, and 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 you know, he starts running away, and he and he runs up to the roof of the building, and there's this ladder that's just laid across, like forming a bridge to the next building, and he looks at it like like he's not sure about it, and I'm like, did did he put that ladder there? Like, like <laughs> yeah. other because because he looked at it like he didn't know it was there, but if he didn't put it there, what the fuck was it doing there? True. And and that was when our protagonist Jonathan led his uh, police detective uh, foster father to the area of Horace Pinker's murder, and then they chased him away. This this we're gonna go into a lot of really weird tangents because this movie's all over the fucking place. It kind of is like it's trying to be four separate movies at once because you think it's just like a slasher, but then it's this weird like pop culture commentary and that it's also yeah. like ethereal and it's got like spirits and, and it's ghosts. got like two third acts <laughs> it does yeah um, i was like all right movies winding down and then it just kind of went on for another like you know like 33 percent like all right and maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves right? yes we are so in the beginning He's a, uh, uh, I guess, college football practice. Yeah. And he's is, a tight end. Is this back. what triggers the whole thing? Like, apparently, he, he runs into like a goalpost and knocks himself the fuck oh, yeah. out. What was the point of that? And then he had like a concussion, but no one really seemed to care. He kind of yeah. was just like wandering around like a zombie asking people who they are. And they're like, oh, yeah. oh, oh John. It was well, the let's 80s. Take you they home. didn't care about brain damage then. <laughs> brain damage. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I completely forgot about that. Is that is that supposed to imply that See? the whole movie didn't actually happen? That's I like thought that? that that was going to be the angle. I thought that we were going to get like, a, oh, he was concussed the entire time. Yeah, but then we're not. Yeah, it the just movie kinda, just kind of forgets about that. Yeah, I, did I completely too. did. Yeah, I just love how nonchalant they are. Like his girlfriend's walking him home. He's like, this place looks familiar. He's like, yeah, John, that's your house. Let's go fuck. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's like it's like starting a video game and your character is an amnesiac, and so it's like just the excuse to explain everything. Yeah, to the I player. thought like, are we getting an amnesia subplot here? And then nope, it, we just kind of forget about yeah, that. Yeah, no, it doesn't go anywhere. It's weird. <laughs> He got a zinger and didn't even didn't even register. Yeah. So for a little backstory of this kid, we we find out um, he was been living with a foster family since he was seven, and his original family was murdered, and he saw all this like in a dream, like during his amnesia thing, like in his dorm room or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a then, nice dorm room if that's a dorm room. It is a pretty big dorm room. He's yeah. got like a king sized water bed. Wow, you could like break dance in all the like floor space. I yeah. mean, I'm, I think that was just an apartment. <laughs> Either way, a lot of space for him. You know, good for him. Yeah, that's that's right. a good, yeah, that's he had a, a pretty nice good sized bedroom. He had a nice collegiate lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> But so he starts seeing like weird visions in his sleep and stuff and um, Horace Pinker like he ba he ends up killing his girlfriend in mm -hmm. like a really just kind of brutal way There's like blood all over the bathroom. It looks like that scene out of it no, he, does, and, he, does, he does the saber tooth thing and he writes happy birthday and in her blood on the wall. Yeah, true That's pretty metal. That he was has good pretty, handwriting too. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> considering he's... I assume he was in a rush. <laughs> like, it, <laughs> his penmanship was quite nice. Yeah. It looked like a font. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just bought it on a font yeah. labs or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's when we find out that his foster dad is a detective, and um, he's like, no, come on, listen, I know he's at this warehouse, and then you get there, and it's like uh, Pinker's Plumbing or some shit, or... Mm-hmm. or uh, it's like a TV repair. Oh yeah, there you go. Place. That, I don't know. I want a guy like Horace Pinker fixing my TV. Yeah. I feel like if I give that man like 50 bucks, anything in here will work, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, by the end of the movie... He's good at his trade. He knows that shit inside and out. That's true. Uh, that, was a, um, that was a good one. That was a fucking good uh, parallel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then that leads us to where Harlan was talking before, how he just kind of escaped out of the top of this building. Yeah. The entire police force chases him up, and he like leaps across, or he walks across this ladder that's like strewn about to the other building, and then they're like, "Oh shit!" And then they have to like three stooges out out there, <laughs> and uh, Jonathan, he's just like, "Fuck this!" He killed my girlfriend, and he like Spider-Man leaps across the building. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was actually a pretty solid fight between the two as well. Yeah, like they're getting in some blows. I mean, yeah. the, the fight choreography looks pretty realistic, I guess. Well, and, and he as starts much as it could off be for like this he, kind of movie. He, like he like sneaks up on him because I think he's trying to like you know like rip like a, a like a locked door open, and and fucking Jonathan runs up and just drop kicks him in the back. It was fucking great. That was amazing, <laughs> yeah. and I really appreciate that about this movie. The protagonist is not a wimp. He no, like, he's pretty he like good. goes out of his way to beat ass, and it's like he's gonna get this guy. No, yeah, yeah he really Aragorns it up in this. <laughs> <laughs> True, um, but yeah, Har- so- Harlan gets that joke now. Hey, there we go. <laughs> we, we got him to watch Fellowship. By the way, we got two more to go. It was bad. Oh, no, I was just kidding. No. <laughs> you're no. bad. All right, you're out of here, coward. And so coward Harlan didn't snake. even fucking cum his pants when he saw Aragorn up on the screen. So, yeah, I know, so, right? So shocker. No, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're talk about, about Lord of Aragorn. The Rings. We're talking about real <laughs> this shit, is, dude. This is a bait episode. We're gonna talk about Lord of the Rings now. <laughs> we brought you here to talk about fellowship. Um, no, Do you but, think if we did a fellowship episode, people wouldn't like swarm to our podcast to listen to that? I'm sure they would. <laughs> they might. A 22 year old like Oscar movie. That's yeah. Yeah. Talk of the town. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. With Rings of Power coming out, people are like, "Yo, B roll boys." They on that shit? They on the finger on the pulse? <laughs> are they are they plugged in? Oh, we're jacked oh, in, all right. Dude. <laughs> God, we're funny. Yeah. God damn, we're fucking funny. Uh, but anyway, so far it, it seems like you're uh, almost a standard-ish serial killer revenge plot. Yeah. Um, but then it shows Horace Pinker in jail. Um, and I guess somehow uh, he's being executed in like a week because when they mm-hmm. when when him and Jonathan yeah, are like it takes a long time like there, a year. there are so many appeals for like death sentences that shit takes forever dude he would have been on death row for like 20 30 years yeah. but like they're like well you know what let's get this done this weekend yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when they were having that brawl the only reason that like Jonathan didn't get a knife stabbed to his face is because the cops finally got up there yeah. and he's like I want to see him I want to see him done. I want to see him die. And he's like, right, well, well, hold on. Right, hold on. Sorry. I'll get tickets. Sure? I'll get tickets. <laughs> he's like, I'll get around. box seats. Yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> you know what, John? We'll get you box seats. Yeah. And it's like, they're all box seats. Because <laughs> they're in a box. They're in one singular box. Uh, what the fuck, Don? <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, Don. It, uh, it shows uh, a Horace um, on death row, and he's performing some kind of like ritual. Yeah, he's um, like in his cell. He, and he's got like jumper cables like attached to his fingers, and there's and they're like connected to like a CRT TV. Yeah, like the, on the back of them, like, or, like what, on the back of the TV. How the fuck did he get this shit in prison? Yeah, like and also candles, like he's doing a seance. Yeah, no, he's doing like some sort of like satanic ritual or whatever. And so I'm just like, how the fuck did he get all this shit? Yeah, he can uh, fit like twenty candles in his prison wallet. I can believe some of that. I can believe <laughs> and some the jumper of that. cables <laughs> and the, the TV. Rest of it. <laughs> Like the wall mount. I, I would assume the in the in movie explanation is like, oh, he just requested it as like a death row prisoner. But it's like you wouldn't get all of that shit, or at least most of it. I know? mean, it's, the TV was already there, but it's like, 
all right, what do you want? You, you want like a Baconator or what? He's like, I want jumper cables. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is my last well, meal. Would, they, would, they, would, they, would prisoners have a CRT in their cell and they could like easily break it, the <clears throat> fucking screen and use it's the glass? Weird. I think it's weird. I think it's based on the prison. Because, you know, some prisoners can take in-prison jobs and make money and spend it on shit. But I think it's at the guard's discretion. Uh-huh. And uh, let me say, Horace Pinker probably wouldn't get that privilege. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least I would hope not. Um, but what happens after that is fucking great. So he finishes his ritual, the TV explodes, and I guess the guard was like, huh, well that's weird. Good thing this guy's about to die. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're taking Helping him us out along. Of, <laughs> they're taking him out of his cell, and like, he was pretending to be dead or something, like from the shock, I guess. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, the security guard is giving him full-on mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. And he just starts biting the fuck out of his lip, and you get this like really gnarly shot of the officer like pulling back, and no, his yeah. lips are all fucked. He's like, it's, that was great. Yeah, he's like stretching the fuck out of it, <clears throat> like you would to to one's ball sack before you, you yeah, know. yeah, before you put your face in and blow, <laughs> you make a little like. <laughs> I get it, man. We've all been, we've all been there. Oh my god. I can't wait to bring that up with Anna and just see her reaction. She's just going to try it immediately. <laughs> god damn. Uh, so, um, then that brings us to the uh, execution. Again, seems like they just did it that same weekend. Yeah. Um, so the detective and Jonathan are in there. And um, Horace has some pretty, like, not really last words, kind of like a last, like, novel. Because he, like, goes <laughs> last on for, monologue. Yeah. <laughs> he goes on, la- uh, goes on for a fucking while, and we find out that he's Jonathan's dad. <gasps> he's the one that killed uh, the mother and sister. What? Exactly. So, how did, did he get arrested for that originally, or how did he get away, you know? Um, I guess. He got shot in the knee. And then I guess he just got By away. Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why he's got like a, a limp. But we'll we'll get more into that later. This movie became like four different things <laughs> yeah. for me. It gets so weird. At this like this point. is pr- this is like pretty standard shit for a little while. But yeah. then like the more it goes on, it'll introduce another element where I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. that's. And it just gets weirder and weirder. Everything that happens after he gets uh, shocked. <laughs> Is just fucking ten out of yeah, ten they, ridiculous. They they pull the they pull the lever. He gets he gets executed and killed, but he's not dead. Well, he they like they they fry his brain, but he's still alive for some reason. And then all the lights go out, and they're like, "Oh, where did he go?" And that, I, I, then he just kind of like his body just kind of like. Well, they found him behind the door, and they're like, "Oh, here he is!" And then they watch. And then they watch. <laughs> he just like went. Back. <laughs> he just like, guys, I gotta just go walk this off real quick. <laughs> we'll try again in a minute. And then, <laughs> and he bursts into flames. Yeah. His corporeal form, dead. Return to the. And earth. then it kind of just beca- the movie becomes this cat and mouse game for a little while between Pinker and Jonathan, where like the, the, the Pinker just keeps possessing like different people around yeah, him. The yeah. next like twenty minutes in that park is fucking great because yeah. he's just like going through people trying to get to him, and yeah. they they all have like his limp that he has from yeah. being shot. Yeah, because he gets shot in the knee as he explains like before the before the events of the movie. At excuse me, and um like yeah, like any person he possesses. They have the limp too. I don't know why you, your soul, when you're possessing someone, would take the physical attribute of a handicap with you. But yeah, I you, guess I guess his soul got got crippled. And wait, <laughs> what, okay, he needs a soul cane. This would be a coincidence. But what if everyone in the park that day had the same <laughs> bum knee? Damn. But but they didn't. Beforehand. What if he, what if he can only possess people who have a bad knee? Oh, dude, that would be pretty limiting. That's like the monkey's paw of like a superpower. It's like I want the power to take over people's body, and it's like cool. You but can they have to have like a serious physical disability. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. <clears throat> Not the most efficient serial killer method. Yeah. All right, and so this is about the time he starts seeing his dead girlfriend. <laughs> Which yeah, so, you know what? Um, Having a shamanistic ritual to teleport yourself into the electric world of like the TV circuits and everything, fine. Right? Totally, totally real. Um, but also, ghosts exist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, we get force ghosts in this movie. It's so fucking weird. This was, I like really raised an eyebrow at this scene because yeah, his his dead girlfriend. She comes shows back up. several times because like, like we see her earlier 
and she just looks, you know, she's covered in blood, but she still looks real. And you, you just know? think it's and, kind of a dream. And, and it is a dream, yeah. and you're like, oh, okay, sure, like, I shouldn't take that seriously. But then she shows up, and yeah, like, she's just straight up, like, force ghost. And, like, and she, like, you know, like, fucking repels pinker's you know spirit away later like she like erects like a like a spirit wall in front of it's some weird <laughs> shit like there's like a wall and he can't go past it and then she shoots like a beam out of her chest and i the, yeah, like, like my eyebrow Iron Man. my eyebrow could not have gone rocketed any through the from, roof I, I was from like, entry like i was like what the fuck movie <laughs> Well, see, that's another thing about her that it never explains. So I guess she's supposed to be like his guardian angel. And she gives him uh, a necklace that she had. The necklace that he gave her at the beginning of the movie. It was but, it, for her birthday, and it was just like a little heart on the chain. But how does and, she or he know that it's like a ward against his evil? Well, yeah, it, it's, it's like... They treat it like a cross in the exorcist. Yeah, it has like that, that spiritual power, but it seems like the only reason that it has that power is because it was sentimental between the two of them. That didn't happen to, like, the other 50 people he killed? <laughs> so, no. I guess, guess they, they I guess didn't no love one, each other enough. Yeah, I guess no like, one could, really tried to pick up a like, necklace like and sling if, it at if, him or If he killed somebody's, like, like, somebody else's wife, could they, like, use, like, their wife's favorite t-shirt and be like, get away! <laughs> yeah, true. So, like, if, if Horace Pinker killed me, could you, like, pick up my copy of Aliens and, like... <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't grab this here bong and be like, get out of here. <laughs> you just smash it over his head. <laughs> He's fucking dead forever. Wes, you're you're, you're dying. You're, you're dying from a serial killer, and uh -huh. I'm asking what's the one uh object in the house that can like manifest your spirit and your spirit energy. What what would you choose? <laughs> I mean I guess Harlan called it, right? <laughs> my, like, my, um, my Rengoku figure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he has a sword. <laughs> That'll come in handy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I would choose my Pro Controller because I just spent a lot of money on it. <laughs> it means a lot to you in this moment. Uh, it means a lot to me right now. For the, the next, next couple paychecks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turning point. Mine is my entire Berserk Deluxe hardcover collection, all 11 volumes. Oh, fuck, that would be Aaron's, too. <laughs> fuck, because then we'd have to find a way to kill him with it. We're like, well, I guess we're going to set up a Home Alone trap and have it, like, fall out of a bucket on him. <laughs> well, no, it just has, like, an AoE towards him where, like, it makes him shrivel up. Like, he's not strangling the... He's not strangling Pinker with the necklace. I kept, okay, I kept, that's kind of like, like a charm. I kept thinking he was going to do that. Like, I kept thinking he was going to put the necklace on him and then it would just, like, burn him to death or something. I thought that he was just gonna wear it himself and it was gonna act like body armor for him. I don't know. Yeah. Like, every time that I thought that this movie was gonna do something, it just, like, <laughs> just kind it, of it took a complete right turn into something weirder, and I was like, oh, okay. I guess we're going through TV shows now. Bro. And we're superimposing this cat and mouse fight, this, like, Looney Tunes ass chase that between was... Jonathan and Pinker going through, like, we go through, like, Frankenstein. Oh. Uh, uh, they were in a Leave It to Beaver episode. <laughs> yeah, that was so fucking weird. Like I, I don't know where I thought the movie was going, and I thought it was weird at, at like the force ghost, the f force ghost part. Yeah, but the foreskin. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was weird at the foreskin part, but it, the, yeah, then it just really turned it up to eleven at this point, in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we kind of stuttered for a second. Uh, but now that he does have that super overpowered Dark Souls ward, what does he do? He Horus chucks into the fucking lake, and uh, then this lost a time, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah, because Pinker takes control of like a like a construction worker or something. Yeah, dude was just there oh, yeah. with like a giant pickaxe. It's one of yeah. like the literal six people that he was, he was just he was just mining for ore yeah, in the middle this, of the This was during that lake scene. And during the during the scuffle, Pinker gets the necklace on the pickaxe and then hucks it like a hundred yards into like, this dude, lake. Like holy fuck the air crazy he gets on this. How far he, like I like a pickaxe like that, I feel like I could throw it like maybe twenty feet. Maybe. This thing looks heavy. Oh, and he throws it like Uncle Rico. 
<laughs> right over them in their mountains. I don't know what's more impressive, the pickaxe throw or the fact that Jonathan was able to like narrow in on the coordinates to be able to remember exactly like where Like a the week whole... later, he goes and just dives in like full clothes, by the way. And just he just like, free balls it, like yeah. How, how far down? Okay, can you just like dive twenty feet and find like oh, I'm gonna find a necklace that we hucked in there like a week ago that was attached to a tool that hopefully if if he's lucky it's still attached to it. And it yeah, that's get, like the best case yeah, scenario. It didn't get like buried. It didn't get covered up by like the shit in the lake over right. time. If it was Alatuna, you'd never see it again. It'd be covered in like three dead bodies by the time you went back. <laughs> But so he's you know he's feeling pretty hopeless, pretty oh, powerless. Oh wait, we need to talk about his football team. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. Because right after he loses the necklace, he goes and tells his friends about it, and man, they're fucking down like immediately. Yeah, that, that's no rhino, 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 rhino. That's an interesting thing about this movie is that usually the protagonist is not believed in yeah, any of these kinds of There's scenarios. usually a lot of time spent on that. But he's telling his coach and like his uh, his football buddies like. Yeah, so this guy that I watched die, he he possesses people. Yeah, and like, and, and like, that's it. And we, they're like, oh, all right, we're gonna get on it. We come in on the middle of that conversation, and he and he's like, you know how crazy that sounds, and he's like, I know it sounds crazy, but it's what happened, all right. And they're like, well, all right then. <laughs> yeah, the coach, <laughs> that's just it. <laughs> the coach is like, all right, kid. Right, you say so. That's right. Yeah, and, they're just uh, totally in on it. And uh, Jonathan's best friends in the world are Rhino and Pac Man. And, and they are fucking G's. Rhino fucks hard. Pac-Man doesn't really do anything. He's, he's, he's just, kind of kind of, he's just <laughs> this like dorky guy in the background. I thought he was an extra for the longest time. Me too. Yeah, me too. I was surprised because <laughs> I don't think he has any lines. It's Ted Raimi, and I was like, why does that guy look like Peter Parker? And I was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> I was like, why are they reusing the same extras? Oh, it's the football team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't it's like we've got like lines. the same five guys in the background. They're not saying any, or it's, doing anything. It's weird that he's a named character, like with like a memorable nickname too. He also yeah. gets a death. Like you'd think, like if if you're gonna name a character Pac-Man, there'd be a reason. But it's like, no, he could you could switch him out with any other type of person in the movie. Nothing would have changed. Well, I mean, the other guy's named Rhino for no reason. It's just because he's that strong. I mean, sure, that makes sense, though. I like, guess. and like, he at least contributes more. Like, he's useful. He does more things, and he has lines. Pac-Man doesn't do or say yeah. anything. Well, you know, he's still cool. He's there. He's hanging. He's hanging with the boys. We don't even get a waka waka. That's fair. We yeah. should have got a waka waka. Yeah, not, like, he not a should, single one. Pac-Man should have been chewing up the scenery in every <laughs> every scene he was in. <laughs> it's, like, it's hard to even remember like the order of things that happened because there's so there's so much shit that happened. Like yes. I was pretty glued to this for the most part. Like mm -hmm. I was able to follow it really well. This wasn't another one of these deals where I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" I was like, "Oh, I get it. It's just it's stupid." Yeah. What the fuck? And this one, there is actually too much going on because like once it hits the second act, it's just fucking. It's just like a maelstrom. Well, of shit. So they, so they yeah. like they they chase. Uh, Pinker down to a to like a TV station, I think, because there's like the like the satellite way up on the thing. Yeah, that happens after that Force Ghost fight you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. the chest beam. Oh. oh yeah, and then after the Force Ghost fight, that's when he's like, oh yeah, I can bring us into the TV uh, somehow, right? And then, yeah. Was that his plan from that point? Because it seems like an accident. Because like they like he like Pinker in his foster father's body chases him up this tower, and there's like a TV satellite up there where they like broadcast like local news and shit. And he like falls down right in front of the satellite, and then he's like, "I'm going nationwide, bitches!" <laughs> and then he just gets, he gets beamed over to like California or some shit. Yeah, so he's like up in the TV station. Yeah. And then the detective mentioned he didn't know I had a bad heart. <laughs> okay. And then he died. Sorry, just I just that confused me. <laughs> no, he didn't die. Didn't he die? Because he testified later for Jonathan to be out of uh, jail. You're right. It was just, it was yeah. weird to me. Like, did I mishear this? Because he's like, because Jonathan says. I didn't know you you had a bad heart, and and he says, um, he's like he's like I didn't, but Pinker did. Yeah, and, and that like, didn't make any sense. Yeah, to it's, me like, either. it's like, wait, like it's like wait it's like wait Pinker knew that you did not have a bad heart. What do you want to? Because we thought that he was having a heart attack. Because originally, I guess the the prelude to this scene is that, um. Jonathan's dad thinks that, or his foster dad th is just starting to think like 
that Jonathan killed all these people mm -hmm. because like he'll just he, like he weirdly he weirdly bodies. knew where like the first murder was. He was like, oh, I dreamed it. And I knew that like this the kid had like broken fingers on this hand, and like this is how the bodies were arranged. Yeah. But he was like, oh, it's just a dream. I just dreamed it, da Don, Donnie, not Daddy. Don. And then eventually, <laughs> his dad's like, okay, cut the shit. I think that you're killing these people. Because I just keep waltzing in on you and like all these bloody corpses, and you're like, "Oh, possessed guy did it. <laughs> <laughs> he possessed their bodies and killed them for real." For but real then once true. he gets possessed by Pinker, then he comes back from what I thought was going to be his death scene, and then he's testifying to get Jonathan out of jail. I like to picture Saul Goodman explaining, "Your Honor, my client was possessed by Horace Pinkman." <laughs> <laughs> By Pinker the Stinker himself. That's a Saul Goodman line. <laughs> <laughs> By Pinker the Stinker. Do you, you, you remember that, folks, of the jury? <laughs> it is like scumbag tone. But yeah, from there, it is just like 100% all over the place. Because is that where he gets the idea to take him into TV? Or is like, oh, he get in the TV, so I guess I can follow him? How did he figure out he could follow him? I think, him? because Pinker goes into the TV, and then Jonathan, like, goes back to his place, and he's sleeping. And then he gets... Was it his dream that allowed him to see that he could jump into the yeah, TV? Yeah, how oh my the God. fuck did he get into the TV? Like, you see how stupid this gets? Like, because, because, like, because Pinker, like, okay, like, he did, like, some, some sort of, like, ritual, whatever, sure. And he's, like, like, just, like, an electrical entity now. Like, okay, sure, like, I can follow that. But, like... He's an abstract idea. But, like, but, like yeah, Jonathan, sure, Jonathan is still just a normal dude. How the fuck does he get into a TV? <laughs> well, okay. he's, he's kind of like an incorporeal spirit. He's more of an abstract idea of Pinker at that point. He's just kind of like the amalgamation of evil that is that guy's spirit. Right. I guess Horace Pinker is like like a, like a tulpa for evil, and since Jonathan is his son, he tapped into his weird like shaman yeah. ritual powers. And he just doubles down on what a horrible prick he is. So anyway, they're inside the TV together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're they're going across all these different well, TV shows. Well, yeah, he like sets a trap for him. Like he like gets like a local news dude to come in, and he's like, and he's like, you know, roll the cameras and all. Jonathan and I'll, and I'll, gets a trap. Yeah, really. he's like, I'll I'll bring the I'll bring the killer back here, and then yeah, I'm not clear. Like he like he dives into the TV like it's a fucking Mario sixty four painting. <laughs> And, and then, yeah, like, they're, like, running through all these, like, historical moments or, or TV shows and shit like that. And then and then they jump out, and they're just in this random family's room, and it's supposed to be, like, a funny moment where they're, like, you know, like, hey, quit, I'm trying to watch the Jets or some shit like that. <laughs> and, 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 like, two people, like, fighting to the death. And then, and then he steals their TV remote, and that's true. his upper hand. Oh, well, and if the... they were watching the Jets, they deserve that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Even for 80s Jets, like, ugh. But, um, well, there's a part where the lady, and she's supposed to, be, I guess, be like a slob. She doesn't give a shit that there's two people fighting to the death in her living room. She's like, I've heard of audience participation shows, but this is ridiculous. And, <laughs> and, and God <laughs> fucking damn did we get guffaw. Dude, I <laughs> lost my shit. My knees were slapped. True. Mine buckled and I was sitting down. My faws were guffed. <laughs> That's right. My haws were hawed. My he's were hot. <laughs> okay. But yeah, and then we go into the TV. And then, yeah. then they come back out of the TV. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, and then they fight again. Yeah, yeah. They, they keep, they have really a lot of fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of looks like improvised fighting too. It doesn't have any like real choreography. I guess when I said it, it looks quote unquote unquote realistic. It's just like how normal people would fight. I guess the the best looking fight was the very first one on the roof, and then the rest of them just looked like they were just kind of play fighting. It's just like <laughs> bar fights. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can hit each other, but not really. Like, don't like, hit the face. Yeah. yeah, they have that moment, you know, like where they, where he's like, you know, he gets because like he like uses the remote to like pause him, and. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? and how did that work? I was I was wondering because I was like, because all of a sudden he has a click remote. Yeah, like I'm like, you can't fucking pause TV back then. And I think the whole point was that it was live TV. Well, what, could it have been like a VCR? But thing? I don't think so, because like the point is that he he went through like the TV that network, like true. it was live TV. You and can't the, you couldn't pause live TV back then. And the only way he was gonna be able to capture him is have that guy like streaming live, like yeah. he was broadcasting live, which well, is why he was pissed. 
that well, was there in the first place. Well, I'm saying maybe like the remote that they stole, maybe it was one of those, and I don't even know if these exist in the 80s. I wasn't born. But what? was it one of those like TV VCR combo deals and maybe it just incidentally that was the remote that they got? Or he picked up a VCR remote hoping it would work and then it just did? I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that and would be the And then it's most... just a plot convenience that we're overanalyzing to be nerds. Yeah. Yeah, I think the main theme of this movie is uh, not think about it too hard. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 if you just kind of let yourself experience it, then it's great. Yeah, because <laughs> if, if, if you try to no prize it, you're not gonna have a good time. Because I do yeah. have to ask. I know, I know it's become a meme at this point, but Harlan, <laughs> this did not have pacing issues, right? Because there was something stupid like every second. Like I can't, I couldn't think of a single part in this movie that was just like a lull. I thought it was a little long. It was a little but, long, but yeah, that, like, that didn't I, mean things weren't happening. Like, like yeah, like things were happening, but at the same time, I don't know that it needed to be an hour and fifty minutes. I, uh, and I, and I, I don't know off the top of my head what I would cut, but I, but I don't know. Like, yeah, like an hour and fifty minutes for this kind of movie felt a little long. A tall hour and a half would probably be fine. Yeah. Because it did seem like I had third acts, because there or a second third act. Because at one point you're like, oh, well, uh, movie's over. Yeah, like <laughs> when, when they have that fight at, at like the like the satellite dish. Like yeah. I thought that was the end of the movie, and then it just kept going, and I was like, oh. Okay. And it was like twenty or twenty five minutes after that. Yeah, and like don't get me wrong, I'm glad it kept going because like after that point the movie just gets stupider and stupider. But yeah, it was just kind of a. A weird direction. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. And when he was um, trying to pull him out of the TV, the whole thing was like, wasn't it to, like, trap him in that world or something? Because he had Rhino and his college friends, like, cut the power... And then there was yeah, like, like breaking into a power plant. Yeah, there was Which like this. Gives us one of the best lines in the movie, by the way. <laughs> when when the, like you know like they're they're breaking into yeah, like the power plant and like there's a lock on on like the the box or the door or whatever and and he's like you know like bust it open and the guy's like but that's a felony and he's like that's not a felony that's a lock break it open <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking awesome yeah. that was, we Rhino Rhino Rhino, Rhino. I have Rhino. to ask why did they need ten guys to break into a power there plant? There were a lot of dudes. <laughs> well, they were in college. Like most of them were just standing there. Watching. Yeah, it's like you could have needed like two of those guys. Well, if tops. anything, that make it even, like they'd only make themselves more likely to get caught. Well, like, yeah, and they're not they're not like disguised or anything. They don't have like ski masks. They're in their fucking Letterman jackets. <laughs> well, I mean, they were in college. They had two guys to do it, and the rest of them just kind of sit there to like turn like, on need, and we watch. Need, we need these eight guys to keep watch. <laughs> I mean, they're the football team, dude. They're always together. <laughs> They shower together, they fucking break, commit <laughs> felonies together. Yeah. They pick, that's not a felony, it's a lock. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, like, I'm having trouble just remembering the, 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 the we, sequence we, we, of I'm movies. having trouble we pretty much having, covered it at that point. The you know? very like they, ending. Yeah, is, they, I mean, they fight at the bedroom, and then... Uh, the, doesn't the girlfriend come back and she says, I'll never leave you, and then... Like, yeah, yeah, he, he gets, gets to see gets all the like people his, that... His power up, yeah, like, he sees them and he's like, and you know, he, he, you know he, went and, he went and got his locket from the bottom of the lake or whatever, his necklace, and then he's like, uh, I forget his girlfriend's name, but he's like, if you're with me, then Allison. give me the... Pa-. There you go. He's like, then give me the power to do this, and then, you know, he goes Super Saiyan and, and you know, fucks his shit up, and then he jumps into the... Into the the um, news crew's camera that they left in the room. He jumps into the camera and flies back out. It, this isn't confusing. He fl- he went in through the camera, and then you see him fly out the TV in his bedroom, and then the, and then Pinker is stuck in the TV. Yeah, because that was another but, point. But of Pinker consent. was in his, in that room. So how is he stuck in the TV? I don't. It doesn't. The, the, yeah, the it goes all <laughs> over the fucking place near the end here. And yeah. this, is, this isn't it's even really, us just being dumb and not paying attention. There's, no, yeah. There is so much that happens in that last half an hour, you're just like, what the it's, fuck? It's a little hard to follow. That, there's that plot point when John Jonathan thought, oh, I'm going to get stuck in the TV, even though if he didn't really even know that that was a possibility, yeah. I guess. Yeah. That was just kind of like, hey, let's try this and hope that it works. And Pinker was like, hey, your watch is broken. And he's like, oh, fuck. And then, I don't know. Yeah, and then Rhino hits he like hits some kind of whatever like terminal, electrical terminal with a crowbar, which wouldn't that electrocute him by I the way? I would think so, yeah. Okay. Wouldn't Again, that be, movie. That be a shocker. Movie. <clears throat> and then like the power to the whole city starts going dark, and that's when Jonathan jumps out of the or jumps into the camera where he puts the necklace on the camera and then jumps out 
of the TV through the camera, <laughs> and then Pinker's still talking to him. It's like the more you try to explain it, the more you're just like. And uh, th that's where I guess I feel like <laughs> the length could have been cut down of like one of these elements. If we could have had the dead people talking to him, or the the force ghosts, or the like importance placed on the necklace. Yeah, I they, feel like two of those three things could have gone. Yeah, they're kind and of would have made this a lot. They're better. kind of redundant. Yeah. That's what I was saying. It seemed like Wes Craven just like took a bunch of ideas that he cut from other movies and just mashed them it's into just one. Just like shotgun things <laughs> yeah, like, at the audience so we just have so many plate internal like plates to spin yeah and i'm trying to think like oh wait this co this plot element coincides with this one and it kind of makes sense because this is just like a roller coaster the whole way through but now that i'm sitting here thinking about it i'm having a stroke you can trying like, to like really sum summarize it yeah you, you, you can follow the general logic but when you try to explain it back to someone you're like uh, it's like, oh, but we forgot this. And, oh, th this interacts with yeah, this thing. I was, I was trying really yeah. hard to take notes through the whole thing, and I still got fucking lost. Just because yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just one thing after another. Um, but yeah, that's shocker. Oh yeah, and they play power metal like five songs through yeah, the, the whole movie. The, the whole music time. is really weird. Like especially in the first half when this movie's trying more so to be like a a horror slasher. Yeah, then Molly Crew it's, starts it's, playing. It's, it's taking it a bit more seriously in the first half and the music is really overbearing. Like it's distracting. There's a Megadeth song in here. Oh they had it was a the Megadeth cover of Alice's Cooper Alice Cooper's No More Mr. Nice Guy. Mm -hmm. And then like Harlan, what you're saying, the original score yeah. is just like this random spattering of piano keys yeah, with like just... fast drums over it. So it just sounds like someone just like <laughs> all over a piano. Yeah, well, and that's supposed to punctuate like really intense parts. It's like I really hated that. And, it's and, like they it's tried. Not... It, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say it's like they tried to emulate John Carpenter or something, but without any bearing on why it, his music's good. <laughs> For me, it's not so much like the the chaotic like nature of of the score. Or, you know, like the dissonance in it or anything. It, it was just that it was too damn fucking loud. It was really loud. Oh, yeah. It definitely, like, overpowers every other audio Yeah, channel. like, it, it was, it was, it wasn't serving, uh, you know, like, a purpose in the movie. It was insisting on a tone or, like, distracting from the scene, you know? It would be like if every time that they tried to have a scene that, you know, was supposed to have some kind of emphasis, they just, like, break a glass right into the microphone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it's like, are you paying attention, motherfucker? You got a lot of things to pay attention to. Are you? That's gonna sound good on the. On That's the gonna sound show. great. No, I, th I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what would you give it? I give you, it like a six uh, or a five. I, I feel like this is a weird one because I feel like anything I'm gonna give it is gonna be both too high and too low. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I liked it, but I can't really say it was good. I had a great time watching it. It I, feels like a lot. I feel I feel pretty comfortable saying a six. Like, I, I, I enjoyed watching it overall, uh, but, yeah, all those things we said. <laughs> a six, six is, the, I think, the fairest thing this, this can get. Yeah. I'll go with a six, too. Like, I think it did what it was trying to do, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I enjoyed it. I'll give it a six. It's on my positive end. Certified B. Certified B. B. Well, what, was the, what was your good things about it? Because mine was probably the... A uh, couple of the deaths were pretty fucking gnarly. Like, I, I really liked... I guess it wasn't a death, but again, I really liked that, like, lip-biting scene. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was a cool effect. Yeah. I like the one-liners. <clears throat> oh, it's, it's hard for me to remember all of them, but I know that there were some pretty good ones that we were like, ah. For. I also <laughs> like uh, that one part when he jumped out of the TV. That I can't remember if this was a dream or not, but like, Pinker uh, possessed the recliner. Oh, that, oh yeah, oh, that part was so hype. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, they show multiple times in the movie, he has like this massage chair recliner. Yeah, he gets he, into like three or four. Called times. the Vibomatic. Is it really? It, yeah. it said it on the side. Oh, man. It had a crank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then and he and he gets into it. It's just a vibrator. Goes and, in his and, ass. and Pinker like takes over the chair. He possesses it, and like the chair, like the arms of the chair, like grab him. And you're like, okay, sure. And then like the like the where the like the little pins are that like, <laughs> like they they go away and they're just eyes. This cat, this chair just has eyes now. <laughs> it was just like that was amazing. It was, it was. I think that was my best part of the movie. That, That's that where was, I was like the most on board. Yeah, that was the most hype for me. I will say, I thought it looked really good at the end when he when he 
Not when he flew through the camera, but when he flew out of his own TV onto the floor in his room. I thought that looked really good. Right, yeah, actually. it did have some good effects. Yeah, considering this is fucking shocking. Well, it's funny because like all the yeah, like all the fucking composited images and shit look, of course, terrible. But then you have like you know stunts like that where they fucking fly through a TV and it looked really good actually. Well, a thing that I found kind of <clears throat> cool and. I mean, now they would just, like, digitize it, mm. but when they were superimposing him, when they were superimposing Jonathan and Pinker onto, like, not their live news and, like, stuff that they can control, but, like, old old movies, mm -hmm. like that one episode of, what we'll was leave it, it to be? Yeah. yeah. And then, like, they had Frankenstein, and they chose, like, a shot where Dr. Frankenstein is, like, he looks in the background, and that's where they like, like the two characters yeah. are running around. It's like, oh, they had to like cherry pick that shot, and that's really cool. That I was, thought that was smart. That yeah. was the best in, in TV moment for yeah, like, sure. Like, yeah. even, Frankenstein's even, like, what the fuck? Yeah, like even if it didn't look good, like it was still really well done. You like, see the logic of what they were trying to do there, and I was like, okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. If this is supposed to be kind of like a sleazy, trashy movie, I appreciate that attention <laughs> to detail. Yeah. Well, there you go. Several good things. Yeah, I mean, it's not hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that brings us to uh, what we watch next week. Tri trivia. Trivia. Oh, yeah. Uh, good because <clears throat> I... I... <laughs> so because... I guess that brings us to Harlan's Trivia Hour. A whole hour. But I, I forgot to get trivia before this, uh, so bear with me. Right. Also, my phone's about to die, so hopefully we make it through this. I also need to find uh, a movie. And Harlan actually does do a, an hour of trivia every single time. We, we just, just, we just cut him down to like 30 seconds. Because, man, he just will not shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, this trivia sucks. Literally nothing? Yeah. Dude, we, we introduced you. you gotta have one. <laughs> Wait, there's no trivia? You gotta have at least one thing. Uh... The uh, the the um the construction worker guy that that got possessed is the guitarist from Alice Cooper. That's cool. A lot of like, Alice Cooper uh, lip service because he was. They had like a music video of his too. Yeah, that they like ran into on the TV, like Johnny Frankenstein or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you for that hour of <laughs> trivia, Harlan. <laughs> so, uh, Justin, what are we watching next week? Next week in quotes, we're um, watching <coughs> Justin. <laughs> Justin, what are we watching next time? We're wa next time we're gonna watch 2006's Ultraviolet. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Why do you keep picking movies like this? <laughs> Aeon Flux, uh, Ultraviolet, <laughs> because uh, it was on a fucking worst movies on HBO Max. Because I don't have fucking Netflix anymore. <laughs> Is we this like in that fucking van? Because I did not like Aeon Flux. Holy shit! It's exactly the same fucking movie. No. I, <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I was it's, like, well, it looks like it's, it's gonna be fucking it's, shitty. It's, so. it's also Mila Jovovich from Resident Evil. <laughs> Alright, so oh, hell yeah, that's gonna be great then. Alright, well, uh, we'll see you guys next time for fucking Ultraviolet. Or, or should I pick Resident Evil? That's a good movie. I don't think the first Resident Evil is episode worthy. I think two and three are. I don't think one okay. is. I fucking love two. I would say it's episode worthy because it's stupid, but I'm gonna give that like a nine. No, I mean, for sure. I, I like this, but the thing is, the first one's just kind of like a generic zombie movie. Mm. And then two and three is where it goes off the rails. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah, uh, Ultraviolet. All right, we'll see you guys next time for Ultraviolet. <laughs> Hold on. You dig on both versus... That's it. What, we some kind of... B-Roll Boys. <laughs>